Hi everyone, this is James Stone. Today I wanted to show you how to create grids with Zurb Foundation with data. So today I'm going to start by using one of the templates from Zurb Foundation and I'm going to start with this one called Store. It's a really great template designed by Zurb and obviously responsive as well. And what's really great about these templates is they have the full HTML source that you can just copy and paste into your own project. Okay, so I went ahead and already pasted our template in this document, and I wanted to show a few things. So first, let's take a look at it. We have basically the same thing set up, so no surprises here, but what I wanted to show you is what happens when we don't have an even set of columns, right? This looks great because we have three columns and six items, so it displays perfectly, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove a couple and show you what happens. Okay, so right here we have the thumbnails, and we have this large four, six columns. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remove one of these, and we're gonna take a look at what it looks like. Okay, so, this is one of the issues with a lot of responsive frameworks, but this is maybe not what you wanted for your desired behavior, right? And so let's go ahead and continue and we'll take off one more. Okay, and again, probably not what we wanted aligning all the way to the right. So there's, there's ways to kind of hack and fix this in CSS, but I wanna show you how to do this um, from a template language. I'm gonna do it from JavaScript, but the same principles apply whether you're using JavaScript or another scripting language such as PHP or Ruby. Okay, so I just wanted to point out, I added a class called product listing. And so what I'm going to be doing, even though I have all of this content here, which is from the template, I'm gonna be replacing all of it with something in jQuery. So here's kind of my prefab jQuery code, and I'm gonna go through and explain how this is working. So I have it turned off right now, and I'm gonna turn it back on. So basically this is just telling jQuery to replace the contents of that class that I just showed you with the output that I'm generating. Okay, great. So now we can see we have images here, we have text and prices. So everything looks great, but again, this is with our six even columns, right? So. I actually set up seven different pieces of data so I can add one more and we'll see how that looks. Okay, again, not, not ideal, right? And, and I wanted to show another thing just quickly before we start making changes, but let's give this some really long name, right? And I just wanna point out, you'll see that the columns and are not quite wrapping correctly. And what happens here it's because this text is so long, it displaces this div down and actually causes this kind of strange wrapping. So what foundation is expecting and what we wanna do is to basically close all of our rows correctly. So if we go back and look at how this is working, and I know this is a small text, but you'll see we have a new div, a new div, but we're not closing this row. In fact, we just display them all in order, and that works fine if you expect an even number of content, but when you don't have that, you start to have issues. Okay. So we have our data, and this is just a simple array, right, with hashes inside, name, price, image, nothing fancy here, what I'm doing is creating a new variable called output, and I'm defining a number of columns. We're gonna use this later, but we have a three column layout. And so maybe you wanna use this with a four column or a five column or a two column layout. I just wanted to show you how you can use this regardless of the number of columns you wanna use in your final product. So here with jQuery, we go through each item in the array so what I've done is I've taken our code from this foundation template, put it all on one line and started to break it up into a string and added our different variables. So in this case, I'm adding product name, product price into the appropriate places. Okay, so that's great. 
really all it's doing is nothing fancy. We're just getting data that's displaying and being replaced by jQuery. So let's talk about how to solve this problem, how to close these divs correctly so that we get consistent display regardless of our device and regardless of our framework. Okay, so I already wrote this code. I'm gonna uncomment it and show you how it works and then go through and explain it. Okay, so here you see we start to get consistent look, right? We, we have six items and they're all displaying kind of like our first example. And that's because right here, if I go and inspect this element, is that I'm closing each row correctly. So this is just a conditional statement in JavaScript. And so what it says is index modulus, the number of columns equals the number of columns minus one. So if you don't know what modulus is, it's kind of like when you do division and you have a remainder, modulus is the function that gives you that remainder. So what we're saying here, if we take the index, which is a number that increments from zero to the highest number of elements in our array, when we divide that by the number of columns, which in this case is three, what is the remainder? So, you know, if you divide one by three, you have a remainder of one. If you divide two by three, you have a remainder of two. And if you divide three by three, you have a remainder of zero. So what we're looking for is at the end of a row. So you might be wondering, well, why is it not three and it's actually three minus one or a number of columns minus one? Well, that's because in JavaScript, an array starts with the element number zero. So the number of columns minus one is just changing that value so it's more representative of what we're finding in the array. Then all we do is we add to our output variable the closing and opening of a new row. Okay, so that solved one of our problems, which is to close all of the rows correctly so they display when they're completely full. But if you remember, some of them won't display right if you have a number that's not divisible by the number of columns. So if I remove one of these, we'll see that we get this strange wrapping behavior again. So let's talk about how to fix that. Okay, so this is a function I wrote before. And basically what we do is every time we go through the loop, first we're gonna run our first conditional statement, which looks to see if we need to close and open a new row. But we also wanna see if it's the last product that we're adding to our list. And so our first conditional statement says, if index equals products length minus one. And so if you remember the minus one and the length, we're just changing this so the value is the same as it would be for index. So when you run length on an array, instead of giving eight for a nine item array, it actually gives nine. So it's a little bit counterintuitive. So we just subtract one from that. So basically, this is just saying, this is the last product, let's do something. Next, we create a for loop. And this for loop will go through and add additional columns that are blank so that we get correct wrapping. So they're just like products that doesn't have any information in it. They're just kind of blank. So we have this for statement and we're starting at zero and we're saying C is less than the number of columns minus one minus index modulus, the number of columns. So let's break down how that's working exactly. First of all, you have to remember the order of operations. So the first thing that is gonna happen here is it's gonna take the index and do modulus number of columns. So that's gonna give us a remainder of the value, right, from our three columns. 
However, we need to convert that into a, a number that's going to work well for us. So ideally in this for loop, if it starts out and we get a value of zero, it's going to execute zero times. If we get a value of one, it's going to execute one time and basically give us one extra column. Now, if we get a remainder or a value of two, then it's going to execute two times, which will give us two columns. So the num columns minus one minus the index modulus num calls basically takes that remainder and changes it into a value that gives us the number of columns that are left over. Then once that happens, we just export into our output variable or add or append into our output variable our div that's just empty. So let's take a look at how that's working now. So there we go. This is our expected behavior, and that's exactly how we want it to look. I'm going to go ahead and add in two more. So we have seven products, and you'll see they all display correctly. And I will just go ahead and remove one at a time. There we go. We have six, then five, then four, then three. So this is just a quick way to explain how the grid works and, and a kind of a, a problem area you might run into if you're using it with data where you don't know how many columns you're going to create um, at the start. So this is going to depend on the language you're using. Obviously, I'm going to go ahead and post this on GitHub. So if you want to look at the code, you want to see how these are working. But you can use these conditional statements in pretty much any language because modulus the length of the array, this type of thing. These exist in every single language, so you shouldn't have a problem writing this kind of simple way of handling it. Now, there are more elegant ways to handle this type of situation. For example, I've written a blog post about how to handle this with Ruby. So if you're interested in that, be sure to check out the blog post where I'm going to post all of this code, link to the GitHub, as well as link to this other article. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.